It's Tuesday afternoon. I'm currently doing laundry. The washing machine still leaks like a sieve. Son of a bitch. Yeah, threw a towel down to collect all the moisture. Not sure when she's pissing. So I made some setting changes. I lowered that down in hopes that it'll solve the problem. I don't think it is. Problem is, I don't know when it's leaking or from where. So that sucks. And welcome to my vlog. What did you guys think of that new intro? Pretty grimy, eh? Frig yeah. Figured after seeing that burnout clip, I had to use it for something permanent. So why not use it for an intro? It's pretty sweet. Today I'm not sure what we're going to get up to. Probably just going to chill, take her easy, you know, and uh, go to work. Tonight's going to be a bitch of a night at work, people, let me tell you. Why do I say that? It's because we're short-staffed. I'm prime, and I'm prime now for the rest of the week, which means I have extra duties. And I said duty. I know. It's funny. It's going to be brutal, but frig it. Right now, we're just rendering up some game footage of Grand Theft Auto 4, getting that all said and done, and then uh, I don't know what we're going to get into today. It's currently 1 o'clock, so we're just going to roll with it. Just going to roll with it. Look at this thing. Hey, Felix, i got a present for you. What? There you go, buddy. That's so gross. Why are you so gross? Yeah, I know. You're gross. <laughs> Sicky. There, I'll put the chair back where it was. Good. Leave me alone, you stinky. Are you comfy on my chair? Yes, I'm comfy on your chair, but it stinks. No, I mean my chair. Yeah, my, no, in my chair. Oh, for freak's sakes. It's my chair. Look, I'm so comfy in my chair. I'm so comfy in my chair. You're such a little turd. You're a little turd because you farted. Oh, boy. Oh, Peckerhead steals my chair, thinks it's his. Freak's it's sakes. It's my chair. Jeez. Oh, well, it's the way she goes. So yeah, there was something I didn't talk about last night. Um, I talked about it on my drive to work, but I forgot to talk about it afterwards. And that was the uh, the internet, the cable internet. So basically, with the company I work for, uh, we offer cable, DSL, wireless, and dial-up. Yes, people dial up. There's still areas that use dial-up, which I'm so glad I don't live in one of those. <laughs> Basically for the cable internet, and this is unbelievable, I'm going to be getting the connection. It's already signed up. It happens this Thursday, so... What? No. Oh, freak, happens on the 16th. Freak, that's Friday. So it happens this Friday. Oh, I hope they don't screw it up. Basically, the, uh, the cable internet that I'm getting, it's 20 megs down, 2 megs up, no cap, so it's unlimited usage. You can go ahead and freaking download and upload all you want, which is going to be awesome for the YouTube videos. And the grand total is $35 a month. So, remember yesterday when I was saying I pay $68 for the DSL, $78 now, so $80 bucks for the cable. And so if you think about it, that's $150, and now I'm going to be paying $30. $35 a month. So there's going to be some serious freaking money savings happening there. Let me tell you something now. So that's pretty right on and awesome sauce. I'm really excited for that. And um, that's going to happen this Friday and I'm going to have to call freaking uh, cable company on Monday and tell them I need to return the modem so that they send me a box to do that. So right on, we're going to have some freaking awesome cable with no caps, which means if I decide to do a live stream, I don't have to worry about freaking paying a lot of money to the cable company because won't have to even though I haven't done a live stream in forever but you know you get the point just saying I can uh, you know and lately I've been using the Skype chat with uh, the CEO of Red Light Broadcasting you know we've been plotting and planning and trying to get some things going and it's been pretty good it's been pretty good so yeah that's the way she goes that's about all I got for that and um, I'm just gonna carry on with this day so I'll talk to you guys later peace out went out to check the mail no not the PO box just the mailbox and um, we got some mail. Got a flyer from Dell. Guess they want me to buy a new laptop already. Freak sakes. Let's look through it and see what kind of deals they have. Friggin' Dell, eh? Give the gift of inspiration with an Inspirion laptop. Six ninety nine. Uh, let me get a better macro on this. Come on. So for six ninety nine, you get a Core i three processor, Windows eight, with a fifteen inch screen, and it comes with a DVD player for entertainment. That doesn't sound that good. Give the holidays a special touch with this new Dell laptop that flips to turn into a tablet. That's kind of neat. It's the XPS 12 inch Ultrabook. That's kind of cool. What was the damage on that? Holy son of a bitch. It's got an i5 ultra low processor, ultra low voltage, 128 gig SATA small, or SSD, sorry. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Edge to edge with Gorilla Glass. Holy shit. Oh, it looks like Dell's trying to be a Mac. An iMac. 1500 bucks gets you an... Uh, oh, it's a... It's a uh, lowered voltage, once again, processor. i5. Not the ultra low, but the S is not as performance as just a straight i5. 6 gigs of RAM. Look at this thing. Looks exactly like a Mac, uh, an iMac. Except for it looks like they did it right because it looks like they put the ports on the side, not the back. Yup. And it's a touch screen, people. It's a touch screen. Oh, they got their freaking Ultrabook 13 inch out. It's got an i7 dual core ultra low voltage processor, 128 gig drive, solid state. Boots up in seconds with Intel Rapid Start technology. Well, I'm sure the solid state has something to do with that. And it's got a spill resistant keyboard with backlighting. Looks like a Mac Air. That's a nice laptop. The XPS 15. Expensive as frig, but it's got the i7 quad core. Oh, too bad it has Windows 8. You know, 8 gigs of RAM. <clears throat> GT 640. Not bad. Not bad. Mind you, if I were to buy a laptop, it'd probably be this guy right here for $900. It's got the i7 third gen quad core. Uh, Windows 8, unfortunately. 8 gigs of RAM. 15 inch screen. 2 gig uh, RAM freaking Radeon card. Yeah, I'd probably pick that guy up. Then they got their cheap desktops here. i5 3130 or 3330, sorry. And this one here is an i5 or an i3, sorry. Yeah, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy at all. Oh, they got the XPS 8500, which looks like my uh, 9... No, actually, it looks like my 8300. Looks like it's the same form factor. And what do you get with that? Get an i7-3770, Windows 8, 16 gigs of RAM with a 2TB hard drive with 32 gigs of solid state, a Blu-ray player, AMD 7770, 2GB, and 15 months of McAfee, which I wish you could choose to not have. If I were to pick up a new laptop, though, it would definitely be an Alienware. I love these things. They're so nice. Yeah, I'd probably go with the big 17-inch here. It's got the 3rd uh, Gen Core, freaking i7, 3630. Windows 8, 12 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte hard drive, the 660 video card, and the Alien FX for custom lighting and effect controls. Yeah, that thing's badass. It looks awesome, too. Not sure how I feel about their new desktops, though. The X51s, they're really small. Like, they're the size of an Xbox 360. 700 bucks, and you get an i3, Windows 8, 6 gigs of RAM, 640 GT card from NVIDIA, and a slot-loaded dual-layer DVD burner. 700 bucks. And that's pretty much all they got in the flyer. The rest of the crap is stuff you can buy at Walmart. So, frig it. Oh well, it's the way she goes. You know how you guys are always asking me about these Christmas Boosh videos and you want me to do some more? Well, I'm kind of working on a Boosh video right now. It's been a work in progress for about three weeks. I'm going to give you a little taste of it. There we go. <laughs> Can you guess what song I'm shitting my pants to? <laughs> Opa Gundam style! Alrighty, well it's 3.30, it's time to head her into work. Friggin' guy over here in a van sitting in front of the house and what the frig he's doing. So let's get a shot of his license plate. And that way there, if anything goes missing, I know who to blame. Yeah, I don't know what the frig he's doing, but he's sitting outside in front of the house, for frig sakes. I don't know, frig him, he's on camera now, dick bag. Alright, let's go to work. Yeah, I'd really like to know why the hell he was sitting outside the house, but he's just kind of sleeping in his van or some freaking thing, so... Oh, well, I got his plate on tape, so if the son of a bitch does break into the house, well, uh, we got somebody to blame, so frig it. Well, today is going to suck, like I said. Just got to go to work and get these eight hours over with and then do the same for tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. And then the weekend's here and next week we're actually full staffed. And then got another week ahead where I'm freaking by myself prime. It sucks because if, like right now, if Bruce or Bob were to get sick, I'd be alone. I'd be running the show alone. And they would let me run it alone because they know I can. That's why my boss was all butthurt when I used the union and fought for my rights to not have to work weekends because he wanted me on weekends because he knows I can hold my own and I can do a damn good job doing it. Well, why should I be 
punished for actually doing a good job, you know? Kind of doesn't make sense. Do a good job and you get shit all over. You do a bad job and you get promoted to friggin' CEO. So, frag it. Guess I'll have to start doing a bad job, I guess, eh? Just the way she goes. So yeah, you saw my my new Boosh song, re remixing Gondam style. And uh, let me tell you, it's been a pain in the ass to do. A real pain in the ass to freaking do. This has been an ongoing project for three weeks, and I only got about two minutes of the three minutes complete. So, needless to say, it won't be up anytime soon, but you never know. Holy shit, that sun is freaking bright. I can't see anything. I just want people to know that the farting Gondam style, it's not because I don't like the song, I actually do like the song. It's got a catchy tune, it's got a good beat to it, you know? It's not that the song's a bad song, it's just I think it's freaking hilarious to have it fart the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> of course I'm gonna piss off a bunch of people who are like big time fanboys of the Gondam style. Wow, that windscreen is just pitted. I don't give a shit though, I'm not gonna replace it. So, right now, at work, um, a little bit of an update for you guys as to what's going on with my job. Apparently, the federal government's working to get the ONTC out of being a crown corporation and merge us in with another ministry, which, if this goes through, uh, everything will be good. Jobs will be saved, people will be happy, life goes on, obladi oh, oh, blah, da. But the problem is, is the provincial government's like, no, 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 we don't want to save it, we want it gone. Because they're trying to cover their asses on that frickin' power plant they built down in Oakville, and they have to relocate. So they need the money from the sale to do that. But this is what they don't get, and this is what was brought up at the, uh, the House of Commons, was um, if they let us go and tell us to frig off, the amount of people with this security, I mentioned that security paid in the past, the premium security wages, or secured wages I should say, the amount of people they would have to pay that are on that would dwarf, it would be, end up costing the government an extra seven, 700 to 800 million dollars for the duration of the uh, time that they have to pay us out. And because it's not just our department that would be hurt. It's the whole company, and there's over like 1,300 employees that have this here on the, in the company. So it would really kick the shit. Like, they sure, they would get $120 million up front so they could afford to uh, move the thing, like move the power plant to wherever they want to move it. But in the long run, they'd be paying out the ass to basically pay us to sit at home and flog the bishop. You know what I'm saying? So in the long run, it's just not worth it. But, of course, you know the government, they don't friggin' think, they just want to do, they want to act, act now, deal with it later, and then when it comes down to it and they go, oh my god, we're getting friggin' reamed in the arse and there's nothing we can do about it because of the situation, what are they gonna do? They're gonna up taxes. Oh, we got the fuzz. And people are not getting out of the way. What a bunch of dick anuses. Alright, people. Find the gas pedal and friggin' smash it. Holy shit, the cops have been gone for a while, people. I'm not gonna make this light. Son of a bitch. So yeah, like it doesn't make sense that they want to can the company and they think that they're gonna make all this money from it and blah, blah, blah and all this other shit. And that it's a good move to shut the company down, sell it to a private owner and be done with it and what they're not taking into consideration is the upkeep for the people who, who are on the secure uh, secure payment thing secure <coughs> uh, security wages so in the long run it's gonna hurt this province big time and they don't see it and that's what our local uh, MP for uh, the, the PC that's what Jay Aspen that's what he brought to the table and he explained like listen there's another solution here where it's not going to cost us a freaking mint. It'll be cheaper and better and wiser to do it like this. And he brought it to the federal government. The federal government is all about, you know, bringing the deficit down. 
and they realize, holy shit, you're right, bud, we need to do it like this. This makes shit tons more sense. So let's do it like this. So now we got the federal government on board. Let's just hope the federal government can supersede the provincial government and we get our way because it would be nice to know that I still have a job. But if all else fails and I have to do something, then yeah, I'm gonna open up my business. I'm gonna fix computers in this town. Frigate. Okay, well we got like friggin' 10 minutes to make it to work. Son of a bitch. So we gotta cruise. You gotta hammer it down, you know, and just freaking gabber. her. Holy shit, so many people. So, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna freaking go off to work and get this shift over with. Maybe there'll be an update from the GCA, I don't know. I was told uh, I'm allowed to say some of the stuff in the updates, but not all of it, because it is confidential material. But basically what I just said there, that there was actually in the North Bay Nugget, that's public matter. See, the girlfriend was under the influence that um, the government said, frig you guys, you're done, we're selling you, it's over. But right now, everything's kind of on, on a hiatus until we settle this here, the, the, this here thing. Like, well, I said it in the past, North Bay is, is turning into a shit town due to the sale of the, uh, the sale of the ONTC. So if the ONTC goes, then that's gonna hurt this town big time. And a lot of people have already left, a lot of businesses have already closed. A lot of people can't even sell their freaking houses due to this. Like my, my dad's neighbor just sold his house, but he took a mega loss. He was asking 198,000 for the house, and he ended up selling it for 160 because his new house out in, uh, in the Corbeil area, he wasn't allowed to have it until uh, he sold this house. It was one of those types of terms. So he had to sell before he could buy, and he couldn't sell. Like, he couldn't find anybody to buy the freaking place. Dad's just hoping that it's not freaking, uh, like, uh, that it's an older couple and not some young punks or freaking immigrants or anything, because, geez, they just wreck the place and they lower the value. He's already having a problem with his, his one neighbor, his brand new neighbor next door, they're young people and uh, they haven't mowed the lawn or anything since they moved in and their yard looks like shit like my yard looks like shit the next year i'm hoping to get that fixed dad told me he only it only costs like uh, 150 bucks to do his whole lawn with that spray ended up it only cost him 25 bucks when buddy came over and sprayed that little area but uh 150 bucks to spray the front yard that's what he got quoted my front yard's no bigger than his so i might get uh might get buddy's number dad has his business card and get them to come over and hydro seed my yard next year. See if I can borrow uh, dad's rototiller and till up the yard and then pack it flat and then freaking have buddy come over and just hose down my yard and make it into a nice yard. Backyard's just kife, but I don't really give a shit about the backyard. I care about the front yard because that's what people see from the road, right? And it'd be nice to have a nice, a nice lawn. You know what, I'm gonna beat this truck. Because if he tries to make that turn, he's going to kill me. So yeah, it'd be nice to have a nice front yard. So, and Dad said that hydro seed comes back every year. And they also treat it with some like weed killer. So that you don't get a weed bed in the front yard, which is nice. So, holy shit, they took down the big tree. Well, son of a bitch. Well, I can't park here. So... I might park it right beside Boosie. Customers can go frig themselves for a couple days. Um, yeah, that feels pretty straight. I'll get a notice on my window that I'm not supposed to park here, but I don't give a shit. So, frig it. All right, let's go inside. Yeah, they finally took down that big tree. Holy shit. Wonder whose car got crushed by a branch from the do that. Crazy. Hey, Billy, look, it's got a thumb like yours. Right on. Alrighty, well, it's 6 o'clock break time, and let me tell you, people, it looks crazy with that big tree gone. Holy shit. Honestly, I wonder whose car got crushed by a falling branch for them to finally come around and taken down that tree. It makes me wonder. 
because that tree's been a problem since I started working here. Like limbs were falling off of it, not little limbs, big limbs. It used to be a lot bigger than what it was. And I remember um, uh, one person had a, uh, a Lexus, I think it was like an LS300 or something like that. And they had it parked in that spot over there where the curb comes up and a branch fell off the tree and smashed it and dented the uh, hood and blew out the windshield. And, and that costed a couple bucks to pay for it because, um, well, the company didn't get charged for it. And because it was on, like, the company didn't fork out any money for it. It was up to the person's insurance to pay for it. And yeah, hopefully they had a, a low deductible or otherwise uh, Deckard. That would have been expensive. That would have been real expensive. But um, yeah, it took them friggin' what? I've been here since 2002. It took them 10 years to finally decide to say, you know what? Let's take that tree down because it's falling apart. It was rotten, rotten to the core. So it's about damn time. Well, my iPhone tried to commit suicide again. I had it in my pocket and I felt this like burning on my leg and I'm like, what the hell? So I reach in my pocket and pull it out and the phone's like red hot. I go to turn it on to see how much power it has left. It reported back 20% and it actually had a warning on the screen that said, your phone is too hot to operate. Please allow your phone to cool down before using. And then it shut itself off. And I was like, holy shit, I've never seen that error before. So I was like, wow, this is this is just rifle cocked. I don't even know what the hell the thing's problem is. So yeah, it's probably gonna die. So what I might end up doing is I'm gonna have to buy one of those micro SD to SD card, or no micro SD, freak sakes. Uh, micro SIM to SIM card converters so I can take my SIM card out of the iPhone and put it back on my Android phone and run that until I can get another phone because I'm pretty sure that iPhone's going to die soon. Now it could just be the batteries on its way out and you know needs a replacing but um, yeah I really don't want to be without a phone because that would suck. Big times. Anyway I'm going to head her back inside and I'll talk to you guys on my next break or whenever I talk to you next. So peace the frig out. Well, it's friggin' midnight. Zero degrees Celsius out. Really wish I would have started my car a little earlier than I did. Probably should have looked out the window and saw the ice on it. Yeah, you know, and just do that, you know. Give it the squirt gun effect. The problem is, as soon as you turn off the wipers, uh, as soon as you turn off the wipers, she just freezes right back up on you. Son of a bitch. So, yeah. We'll have to wait for the car to heat up a little bit more and then throw some heat to the window and get some visibility so we can see what we go home. But on that note, um, yeah, browsing the YouTubes there in the last little half an hour and I noticed that uh, there's a new video up on Pug's channel. Uh, Pug's old lady put up a video called, uh, I think it's like Jug Up for Pugs or something like that. And it's the little puppy dogs of the Pugs there, uh, freaking Abby and Gracie. Um, on the popcorn and that popcorn stuff is hilarious because when I was down visiting Logie he gave me a bag of it it's just the stuff that she had was different the stuff that Logie gave me it's a microwave popcorn you literally pitch it in the microwave like a regular bag of Orville Redenbachers and then you pop it a minute and a half whatever it takes and then you give it to your dog and your dog can eat the bag and it's fine it's not gonna have like your typical popcorn kernels that'll make them gag and choke it's meant for dogs so it's, it's, it's pretty sweet stuff and what's funny is I decided to try it see how it tastes and um, it's not too freaking bad it was bacon flavored too it's pretty good but um, yeah, she was giving it to the dogs and she had it in a, a giant container she sits the container on the ground and just lets the dogs pull it out and you know Abby comes up takes one goes and eats it Gracie comes up takes 15 goes eats something <laughs> it was so cute I forgot I love pug dogs they're hilarious little mutants but uh, yeah, definitely should drop the video, but you guys probably already seen all that because um, the video was already capped out before I even saw it. So, and by that I mean uh, hit the 300 mark. You know, when it gets to 300 and then it just kind of sits there forever, but the likes, sometimes you'll see a video that says 301 views, but it's got like a thousand likes and you're like, oh, there's something wrong with YouTube. No, actually there's nothing wrong with YouTube. What's happening is once it gets to 300, every view after that has to be audited. To make sure it's authentic before it's added to the counter so that's why it takes forever after the 300 to start going up any higher so that's basically what you're seeing from 1 to 301 those views aren't even checked on it could be somebody just constantly hitting f5 to refresh the screen on their video to get it to that 300 mark but then every view after that is counted 
Now, no, that does not work for, for AdSense people. You cannot get monetized views by doing that. That's a whole different algorithm, but we'll save that for another day because my window's thawed out and I want to go home, so let's freaking get out of here. Alrighty, well, I'm home now, and uh, honestly, I was going to not include the driving clips today because, uh, you know, I was told that my videos are too long and everybody has to skip through them and shit, but then I had an epiphany and said, fuck it, it's my video. I'll put whatever the hell I want in it. People don't like it, they don't have to watch. End of story. So on that note, if you liked today's video, hit the like button. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, people, keep on blogging. I'm in the wind, and that's in my car. So I might end up doing that. So basically, I'm going to have to shoot this in the car, because the wind outside is unbelievably ridiculous. Holy shit. Yesterday, it was all nice and calm and warm and stuff, and today, it's like freaking windier and shit and rainy and disgusting out. So at least we have one good day, I guess. That's, you know, we got some stuff done tomorrow. By the way, guys, this No Shave November shit is really starting to piss me off. It really hurts. Like, mainly, mainly my lip is hurting, but... I don't know, it's probably because I haven't had a mustache in like forever. But uh, yeah, freaking drive me nuts. Well, I get the, uh, the average comment daily saying, Adam, film inside your office. I really want you to film inside your office. Can you pretty please film inside your office and show us what it's like inside of there and stuff? Well, you know what, guys? I'm told not to do this. I'm, I wasn't allowed to film in the office, but I was allowed to film in a certain room. So here's a clip from inside the building, and I hope you enjoy it.